that's uh, yeah. that's that added value.
translation of some of the work that's been done. And I also need to mention this one, the Living Warm and Well, which has actually, there's something that started off really quite local, something you grabbed hold of and took. And it, that too seems to have been brought well right across Wirral and even further now. So again, there's lots of really good stuff that, uh, that we've done. I think in the end it didn't really cost we, we put some money to
duties, and I, I accept and I uh, appreciate everything that's gone in, and on in Greece, the UAE, all the rest of it. We sh but some of our uh, services shouldn't be volunteered, they should be paid, and the cuts that the Labour Council are doing, by the way, is a book the Labour Socialist. Yeah. You're carrying out the cuts. Anyway, that's a month's story. Um, I've noticed that on this particular day, uh, Greasby, if I'm right, got £6,000, Hoylake, £5,000, Thingwall, £3,000, West Kirby, £4,800, but Woodchurch only got £1,800. Well, is that the question? The question is, why? Okay, if you'd like to, I'll try and answer it because I think what Jake was saying at the outset. Um, the money was yeah. the money was equally shared out across all the walls, and I know for certain that um, that, that money was uh, spent in, in Upton. And I think the point that Jane was trying to get to was just picking out certain groups and the impact that they had. So it wasn't an exhaustive list; it was an example of some of the things that happened and how it contributes to the council's <coughs> wider pledges. So. And I think what uh, Matthew has mentioned was there's going to be that wider evaluation of all the schemes. I think Jane mentioned that too, but Matthew, should just want to... If I never can, I'll, I'll keep it in our, in our non-partisan theme we're doing at the moment. So, so you mentioned two things, you mentioned the cuts of the council, and obviously there are, there are financial constraints that the council needs to work within, and therefore we have to spend money accordingly. Um, I am very conscious that I don't think that volunteers should be doing things that are the duty of the council. But what I do recognise is that volunteers can have an immense contribution to make to their communities and actually improve people's lives immeasurably. And we need to do everything to inspire people to do that, to encourage them to continue to do that. And I will stop at nothing to make sure that happens. The other thing I wanted to note, you mentioned, and I just completely explained, that there was an equal distribution of the money. Actually, in my first ever meeting um, of one of these, I think I stood up and had a bit of a go at the Tories here to say we should be getting more money um, with church because we have higher population and deprivation. And um, while, while for the core funding it stayed the same, what I was really pleased about it had cross party support was when we had anti social behaviour funding of 15,000, everybody agreed that the lion's share of that, about £10,000, came to wood church. And that was with complete agreement. From right across the constituency, so I think actually in that regard we do pretty well. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that. And, and the other thing about volunteer, I, I think I must be the big society last book, in fact, uh, the only person still prefer to mention is Link. But um, it, as well as the benefits that it gives to the people that are on the receiving end of the volunteer, to so improve community, improve the environment, supported people to live better. I think it has a huge benefit, benefit to the people who do the volunteering. Too. Absolutely. So, so it, it, it's, it's merits, it has merits on, on all sides, really, and can greatly improve volunteers' lives as well as the people that benefit from their activity. So, uh, volunteering shouldn't be, it isn't a really replacement for proper uh, you know, paid activity and paid services, but it does give people an opportunity to to contribute. Um, certainly people who've retired or people who uh, uh, aren't working at or people who are looking to go to work. There's lots of opportunities to, to demonstrate on CVs and so on so forth that activity that people do. And as someone who does a little bit of interviewing myself and all that, I like to see that people have been prepared to gain one to do something and contribute. And I notice even on LinkedIn these days you have a what you what voluntary activities have you done and so on so forth. So lots of opportunities.
to keep uh, Boy Lake uh, as we want to see it. Um, and we're very proud of our village, and as you've just said, uh, it is the festival of first, which are volunteers in our community uh, who have now received the Queen's Award for their efforts. Um, I am partial to that and have been it, so I now have two MEs. <laughs>
families cannot park down there. We don't want paid parking, but we want some sort of resolution so that you know our families can park where we live whilst other people are coming in and, and frequenting the bars and restaurants and the beach, etc. Okay, thank you. A number of good points there. Uh, my, my colleague has reminded me that the, um, that the attack happened in Wellington. Well, but as we all you know, work collaboratively around these the edges and all that sort of stuff, uh, any, any contribution that people make point remains a good one. In terms of uh, car parking, uh, again, that's something we've taken professional advice about. I do remember when a residence parking scheme was uh, suggested in the past that there was a massive, and I mean a massive, um, a petition against that because of the impact it's going to have on all those businesses and so on. But again, I do think it is an issue that we always come back to and we need to find, find a way of squaring that circle around parking, um, not only in West Kirby, but everywhere really. It seems to be a bit of an issue.
Well, that's a good example of uh, local board councillors pressing for uh, much needed improved uh, facilities. But Absolutely. Would that be fair, Matthew? Absolutely. 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 All right. Lovely. Well done. Um, okay. So again, that's uh, that's important. We all uh, get involved in that. I'm sure we we welcome <coughs> that uh, that increased uh, service and facility within the. Okay, uh, what I'd like to do now is to move into our community questions. I think that's right, and that's on the agenda. Um, and I think, have we had some in, do you want to start? Yeah, we've had a couple of questions through my email, so I'll just follow those. I don't know if Mr Montgomery is in the audience. Um, so uh, Mr Montgomery sent uh, an email to us, um, commenting on... Um, she comes on great length of why the Holy Lake and Melbourne volunteers. Um, I think that's Holy Lake and Bells and Blue who do a lot of work um, in, in the area. Um, but what appears to be the sad decline of council and footy roads, pavements, compounds, beaches, curbsides and roads, and given to break the weeds and grass growing through sand, mountain, on pavements and beaches um, are some of the other nice So uh, this, uh, this Montgomery was asking what we're doing around those issues. So we've sent him a full response, but uh, the reason why I've I represent the residents of Heron Road in Mells. 
costs, which I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with. The ongoing problem of the very dangerous junction of the roundabout of Hoylake Road and Heron Road, together with the speed. Now, after three meetings with Margaret Greenwood last year, together with council officials, 60 odd residents, and we came to the conclusion that we needed something done about the speed, but in particular, we also needed a no entry sign at the end of Heron Road. Um, after which, we wrote to Jane, I'm sure you remember Jane, um, we wrote to you twice, and your response was that. The figures quoted by the council were that there were only five accidents at that junction uh, within the last five years. Now, I don't really dream these figures up, because we know for a fact Heron Road was closed seven times last year due to traffic accidents. The speed's getting worse. The police seem to think that until somebody gets killed, so that was, uh, until somebody gets killed, it's not a problem. It is to the residents who feel neglected. Now, I know it's very commendable, Jane, um, the money that was spent on all these projects, but what we're asking for is something that's going to save lives. We need a no entry sign at the end of Heron Road.